Hello, everyone. How are we doing? Good? <laughs> a lot to take in, right? A lot to absorb. Great. Well, hi, I'm Yuella, um, and I'm going to be talking about young people and innovative decision making. So I'm 24. I'm a digital content creator. I know we don't really like the word digital, <laughs> but I was, like, I was no, I was taking lots of notes. I was like, oh, this is what we need. Um, and I was, I'm actually um, the uh, part of the alumni of Rife magazine that Nikesh was talking about, based at the watershed. So I'm the product of that. And hey, I'm here. It's great. So um, I'm here with the Rising Arts Agency in Bristol. And Rising is a micro social enterprise whose mission isn't just to kind of provide training and commission opportunities for young people. Um, it's also to kind of nurture more diverse participation and staffing and leadership in Bristol's creative sector. And today I kind of want to talk to you a little bit about lessons that we've learned about co-leadership and how young people are key to innovative decision making. Um, so a few months ago, Rising's founding director, Kamina Walton, and I were invited to talk or do a little workshop at a cultural sector event called Doing Things Differently. And it kind of challenges the creative sector to kind of think, okay, what, what can we do that's different um, that will make our cultural offer more inclusive and more successful, right? And we were in the presence of some people who were like, you know, big cultural um, directors and various stakeholders in the cultural sector. And we didn't have a big PowerPoint or nothing as flashy and sophisticated as this. <laughs> we just had some pieces of paper, some pens, and two questions, right? And this was the first question. Put your hand up if you engage with young people in some way in your business, organization, or artistic practice, right? And obviously, everybody put their hands up. And it was like, great, this is amazing. You guys are doing well. And they're like, right, second question. Keep your hand up if you have young people in positions of power or leadership or decision-making in your business artistic practice organization. And all but like two kept their hands up, right? So it's like, okay, so you are engaging with young people, you want to engage with young people, but you don't have any young people as decision-makers in your artistic practice. Why? And they were really sensible people, you know, they had, they had their reasons. They were like, well, you know, we don't have the time and it could be a bit overwhelming for the young people. It's a bit, it's a bit boring, actually. You know, even I like being in those meetings. And, you know, I, we really want to, but we don't know how. So let me quickly tell you a little bit about Rising, right? So Rising was um, born in 2015 by Kamina, and it was born out of conversations in her work with young people, hearing their anxieties about the sector and getting work and being taken seriously as an artist. She recognized that there was some support that needed, was needed in these areas, and Rising was kind of built collaboratively out of that. Um, so all the young people that work with Rising, myself included, are not just participants, but also, um, also co-facilitators and co-leaders. So, for example, um, one out of our three directors is under the age of 25, and 64% of our advisory board members are also under the age of 25. And our youth board were responsible for making Rising's business, 10-year business strategy. And that's got nothing to do with our attention spans or the fact that we, you know, we're not interested or it's too boring. You know, because of the young people, we are more suited to, or more equipped to meet young people's needs, you know? We're like organically, like what Nikesh was saying, like organically just more inclusive. It's not that difficult. And um, as well as that, we are able to empower young people to see themselves as leaders, not just future leaders, but contemporary leaders with knowledge and expertise and value. So that's why me and Kamina started up on board, which is a, um, a program that seeks to get young people onto the boards of some of Bristol's big cultural organizations that work not just regionally, but internationally. You know, we recruit the young people, we provide training and support for that young person and the organization. We advocate for that young person's time and their insight. Um, so we, um, guys, you know what? I have all this paper here and I haven't used it and now I have to look back at it and I don't know I just don't know where I am, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like a bit like a way ahead of myself. Um, so the model was kind of built on the, the combination of Kamina's long-standing experience and my just, you know, youth and perspective and, you know, just like the freshness of the ideas that the young people can bring. 
So obviously, all of you, like me, are emerging leaders. And one of the key things, the most important lesson I've learned about innovative leadership is that it cannot be done alone. Like young people are often seen as like targets or like consumers. But by including us in the conversation, we have the potential to radically shift like our cities, our industries, and even our technologies to being more innovative and more inclusive and more just successful and efficient. It just makes business sense sometimes, you know? Even if you don't really care about like diversity and stuff, although I do. You know, you're like just business-minded. You're like, okay, this makes sense. So um, yeah, we want to be part of that. And if you do too, let's talk. Thank you very much. I'm Uela. <laughs>
It was a rough time, but I got through it. And since then, I've experienced some incredible, magical encounters and opportunities way beyond anything I could have ever imagined. And none of them would have happened if Abram hadn't passed away. Because that's the gift that life gives you in return for the challenges it throws at you. My biggest regret is worrying about what would happen to Abram instead of focusing on being with him while he was still here. So whatever challenges lie ahead, and there will be many, trust that the future will catch you. Trust that the future will catch you so that you can be present to what's happening here and now, because this is where we make change. If you would like to uh, find out more about the lessons that I've learned over the last three years, you can check out our blog at abramwilson.com. Um, if you want to find out more about the Abram Wilson Foundation, you can email me at jenny at abramwilson.com, or you can chat to me later. Um, Albert Einstein is broadly credited with saying that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, uh, but expecting different results. Um, these three lessons have taught me that uh, we all have the power to change our mindset, that if we show up every day and do the work whilst choosing different thoughts, we can take better care of ourselves and our organizations. Thank you.